but there seems to be a palace. <laughs> it's a beautiful palace. Someone seems to be stepping down. She looks like a princess. There is, in, there is something in her hand. A basket? What is in that basket? It looks like a small baby, a newborn. She looks like she is walking towards River Ganga. What is her intent? Is she planning to push that basket into the river? Ladies and gentlemen, we all know the story of Kunti and her son Karna, the hero of Mahabharata. Kunti could keep the secret as long as she wanted to keep it. The secret that she had a child before her marriage with Pandu. Is it that easy to keep a secret in this day and age of social, social media and uh, artificial intelligence? There was a teenager in the US, just like Kunti. She became pregnant and she went to Target looking for a few things for the, new, for the babies. And all of a sudden, Target, the department store, applied all kinds of data mining algorithms like association rule mining and market basket analysis or some other artificial intelligent models. And they started sending out all kinds of ads. Yes, believe me, an obstetrician may not be able to tell you when the baby is going to be born, but Amazon will know to the minute when the newborn is going to come into your family. So, my question is, is it ethical to violate someone's privacy just because you want to make an extra buck? Similarly, we all know the story of Julius Caesar. He was stabbed to death by all his senators, including Marcus Brutus. <coughs> he, uh, in fact, actually, at the last moment, Julius Caesar dramatically uttered, yet too brute. Okay? And of course, in, the, in this 20, 21st century, we don't really need to get our hands dirty. We don't need to get our hands bloody. We only need to buy a few ads on Facebook or some other social media and use them to micro-target the voters to vote for your own candidate or to vote against your opponent. So, we will never know whether it is because of the ads that were bought by some Russian agents, Hillary Clinton lost the election to Donald Trump, or because of the sheer brilliance and competence of the man in the White House today. But one thing is certainly true, that social media is extremely powerful. So we need to be extremely careful, and we cannot let democracy be stolen by some social media. And one more thing, when I, when I remember Julius Caesar, I also remembered another tragic play by Shakespeare. There is this guy called Hamlet, many of you might be knowing him, and he says, Frailty, thy name is woman. What does he mean by that line? He is actually saying, half of this world is weak. All the women are weak and the men are strong. Is that correct? Similarly, we also believe that there are people, philosophers like David Hume, who believes and who claims, I am apt in believing, in suspecting, that the Negroes are naturally inferior to the white people. Is this a correct thing? In fact, actually, the UN Convention on uh, Racial Discrimination clearly stated that the, any superiority uh, um, attributed to uh, uh, racial differences is scientifically unjust, morally condemnable, and socially uh, uh, false, basically, dangerous. So the, the, this kind of a thing we know, but still our artificial intelligence systems, the ML models, claim some of the African-Americans as gorillas. How come? We feed the data in such a way that we only train to recognize the white faces. We are not feeding the right data. Consequently, we believe African-Americans are gorillas. Okay. So this is obviously not ethical. Okay. Now let us see 
what is artificial intelligence i have been talking i have been using that phrase again and again what is really artificial intelligence we actually it is nothing but a piece of software which will learn over the time with the data that we actually are feeding it okay and uh, there are several things uh, in in the, uh, we, we are already familiar with there is one particular uh, uh, software package that can actually recognize handwritten digits for example is it 8 or infinity okay so it can actually figure that one out very easily with that software okay we that is what we call artificial intelligence system similarly google has actually released a drawing a, an artificial intelligence system to draw things for example if somebody is like me who cannot draw very well and you only need to start a little bit of it for example as you could see there is this pineapple you need to draw a little bit and all of a sudden the pineapple will appear okay so this is what we call artificial intelligence systems and these systems are not always behaving in a very ethical manner okay now you may ask me the question our problems of ethics are our problems of morality have they all started with artificial intelligence have they not do we not did we did we not have any problems of this sort before these ai systems came into place obviously not we had lot of ethical problems okay and uh, in fact in um, uh, uh, 19, 1995 california state had to come up with a law to say that it is illegal to discriminate uh, by gender for example okay the case is something like if you take if a man takes a shirt to a dry cleaning sh store you will get one price if the same shirt is taken by a woman she will be charged slightly more perhaps women are richer huh so we don't know that but so this is the, this is actually again the gender discrimination which is th these things existed before similarly uh, there are several other uh, uh, problems that we have faced in the in the past okay and uh, then uh, <clears throat> there is a problem of singularity okay so what is singularity there are people who believe one day there will be systems that will be uh, way superior to the human brains and they will take the control of this entire world and we will all be slaves to these machines or we may even be totally destroyed from the face of the planet so consequently they believe that we need to actually control these systems and uh, we need to do that one and i do agree to some extent we have seen already something called financial singularity in the financial in industry for example many of the trades that we see the stock trades are actually conducted by the algorithmic trading so that is the <coughs> so that is the that is the singularity thing it is like second coming of jesus christ in christianity or something that is what people are believing or it is like kalki the the 10th incarnation of mahavishnu but i do not believe in all that stuff i think for example we all have lo lot of nuclear arsenal several countries in this world have lot of nuclear arsenal and we could destroy this world several times if we want to have we destroyed of course we have faced the problems of hiroshima nagasaki and fukushima of course fukushima is not because of the nuclear weapons but because of the nuclear energy but still all these problems we have faced i am not saying these are not these are minor tra tragedies these are major tragedies but i still believe in human restraint we know how to restrain ourselves so therefore we need not believe what elon musk and nick wolstrom and others who believe that technological singularity will wipe out all, wipe all, us, all of us out okay there are people like luddites in uh, 18th century these people believed that the cotton mills and woolen mills these are actually taking away their jobs those machines are destroying them and similarly many of our people like elon musk are acting like luddites okay sorry uh, then <clears throat> is there any way that we can actually control our uh, not so ethically behaving artificially intelligent systems of course we can what is the first thing that we need to do okay we should not we should move from denial of there is no there is no problem at all kind of a thing to acceptance we should accept that there exists a problem okay and of course we are already accepting if you look at ACM's ethics 
uh, guidelines or American Statistical Association's uh, 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 Code of Ethics. All these things are actually telling us what is uh, we, we, there is a problem, and we should we should design the systems in a in a way such that they behave in a in a in a ethical way. Okay. So similarly, even Google has its own views. It, it, they are expressed in a blog post. They said, "We will never allow our AI systems to contribute to the weapons uh, weapons manufacturing to destroy the people." Okay? If, we, if everybody follows this kind of ethics, then we don't even need to worry about this entire topic. You would not have even invited me to speak to you. Okay? Uh, that is one problem. Okay, is there any other way that we can also do? Is there any other technological solution that we can come up with? Or actually, is there any, uh, uh, are all the models that are built by machine learning, are they all problematic? Of course, they are not. Okay? There are models that are built that are very easily verifiable. They want, you can easily see whether there is a problem with those models or not. One of the models most likely you are familiar with are the linear regression models. What are linear regression models? Look at the model, for example, that says, uh, the, basically the, the story is about um, rent is equal to 10,000 plus 5,000 into bedrooms, plus two, two rupees into something like uh, number of square feet of the apartment, okay? So what does that tell you? That equation tells you something like, if you are, if you are actually uh, w willing to rent an apartment, and if you want one bedroom, you need to pay 5,000 rupees extra. If you want two bedrooms, you need to pay 10,000 rupees extra. And similarly, if you want 1,000 square feet apartment, you need to pay 2,000 rupees more. And if you need to have 2,000 square feet, then you need to pay 4,000 more. So this kind of an equation can, can be easily understood. We can see whether there is any ethical problem with this equation or not. Unless the company who c c comes up with this kind of models is claiming that this model is proprietary and I don't want to share with you. Otherwise, there is no problem with that. Similarly, in the decision tree models, decision tree learning, we don't have any problem. We can actually understand very clearly what is the issue with it and how to, how a particular decision has been taken. Okay? For example, simply like you want to decide whether you want to play cricket this Saturday or not. First question that you might ask yourself is, is it going to be sunny or is it going to be rainy? If it is sunny, then I will play cricket. If it is rainy, I don't want to play cricket. And what about the windiness? If it is extremely windy, I am not going to play cricket. If it is moderately windy, I will play cricket, or something like that. So these are the decisions that you make, and then I can say, as soon as I give you the input, like say, Saturday is going to be sunny and moderately windy, immediately you can say, yes, we are going to play cricket. Am I right? That is the decision tree model. There is nothing unethical about it, and there is nothing that you cannot understand about this model. You can easily understand. But is it really true? Every model that we build is easily understandable. Obviously not. There are models. I talked about decision tree now, and there is a model called random forest, for example. Random forest is nothing but a bunch of decision trees put together. You are asking every decision tree, Am I going to play cricket or not? There are, let us say, this forest contains 1,000 trees. I'll ask every single tree, and each tree is built differently with different uh, variables and different data. And now each tree comes back with yes or no answer. And let us say out of 1,000 trees, 750 decision trees says yes, you will play cricket, let us say. And if, if not, then you may not play cricket, let us say. So in this particular case, how do you know what are the causes, what are the reasons why you are playing cricket today? You cannot tell that one because you don't, you, it, 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 is, it becomes very difficult to understand all these 750 trees, how they really behaved the way they behaved. It is very difficult to explain. Okay? And similarly, deep neural networks, that is the rage these days in the machine learning world, in the artificial intelligence world. So the, what are deep neural networks? You have an input. And that input will be uh, fed into one particular layer that will, that, that will generate another output. And that output will be fed into a different layer. And that will be the input to the second layer. And that layer will generate another output. And that output goes to the next layer. Of course, there can be several layers. In the deep neural, neural networks, you can even have 100 different layers. And finally, the outcome comes. And there will be a lot of nonlinearity in, the, in these models. And when you look at it, for example, what might be the input? The input might be the pixels of a cat, for example. You feed the pixels of a picture that is taken for a cat or a dog. 
and you feed them. And finally, the outcome comes out after 100 layers or something, something like, yes, it is a cat, or yes, it is a dog. How do you know where that particular decision has been made, which layer has contributed, and how much? You cannot really say. It is very, very difficult. Have we lost everything? Not really. There are techniques already. Even for these complex models, we can actually apply things like Lyme, okay? locally intelligent, model agnostic explanations, what does that mean? It sounds very fancy, but nothing fancy here, actually. Basically, what you do is, I told you about input. You modify the input slightly, okay, ever so slightly, and you change something here and something there, and see what exactly happens ultimately. If the outcome changes, you know your perturbation, your mild change that you have made to the input is the one that actually caused the final outcome to, outcome to change. Okay? For example, if it is something like loan application made by some person, and you put, first you rejected it, and you change certain things. For example, one of the parameters is the skin color. You change the skin color, and all of a sudden the model accepts the loan application. Do you understand why the model has rejected? It is of course easy, am I right? So that is the idea behind Lime and DeepLift and other models. Okay? And Google also came up with uh, its own model called uh, uh, what if tool for their TensorFlow platform. And here is a quick demo of that particular thing. And it shows exactly how the decisions are made. Like, for example, you are the person, and I want to know how much money you are going to make. Whether you are going to make less than $50,000 or going to make more than $50,000. What, what are the variables? There might be several variables that might go, how handsome you are, how beautiful you are, and all those things might matter. But apart from that, something like income might matter. Am I right? Okay? Uh, I, I mean, something like your education might matter. Whether you have bachelor's or you are a doctor. If you, are, if you have only a bachelor's degree, most likely you might make less than $50,000. If you are a doctor, like our Meenakshi ma'am, you will make more than $50,000. Am I right? So that is absolutely true. Okay? So that is the thing that you can find out with this what-if tool. Even though you don't understand the inner mechanisms of TensorFlow very clearly, you understand why that decision has been made, why we know that this particular person is making more money than I am making. Am I right? So that is the, that is the advantage of this particular thing. So now, the, the, the finally, I work for a company called Goldman Sachs. And uh, here we, we, uh, we actually need to understand the models very clearly, and we need to explain to our regulators. Many of you might be remembering, I don't think you are that young, to forget this one, 2008, 2009, am I right? What has happened? Obviously, the markets collapsed, and all the jobs lost, and in certain countries, we have even seen 25% unemployment and everything. And most of it is caused by the financial singularity that I have talked about. Am I right? So, the things are, obviously, we, we consequently regulators came up with uh, regulations saying that every model that we use should be explainable. Why are we coming to certain decisions? We need to explain it. Okay? So, that is one of the things that we, that we do day in and day out, and we are getting better at it, and we are doing that, that particular thing. Finally, I would like to tell you one thing. I remember Argus, the mythological character from uh, uh, Greek, Greek mythology. And he has 100 eyes, okay? And he could easily guard Io from uh, Zeus, okay? This is absolutely possible because he has 100 eyes. How many eyes do you have? You have only two, you might say. I would disagree with you. We have 15 billion eyes. Do you agree with me? 15 billion eyes. That means not one, not two, not three. We have 150 million Argus's with us. Am I right? If we keep our eyes open, we can monitor any system that we want to. We can keep them in check. Do you agree with me? Absolutely. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not become Luddites. Let us remain vigilant and Argus side. Thank you.